hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the previous uh, two videos related to the subject of optoelectronics we discussed about the basic concept related to optoelectronics devices and systems and also we discussed about light so the basic concepts associated with light so in today's video we are going to discuss about the various optical phenomena which comes into play in optoelectronics devices and systems in specific we'll be discussing about reflection and refraction we know these are basic things but still we should cover these things so that uh, we have a good understanding of what concepts will be used while discussing the subject of optoelectronics devices and systems okay so we know that uh, the optoelectronics system it consists of several blocks starting from the sender side to the receiver so it consists of uh, the optical sources led laser then we have the electrical uh, transmitter or modulator then we have the optical fiber cable then at the receiver side we have the photo detector then we have uh, the demodulator okay so all these things they are fabricated they are made using semiconductor devices semiconductor materials so obviously there will be a interaction of light with these semiconductor materials so there this optical phenomena the various optical phenomena they come into play so when light interacts with these semiconductor materials the various uh, optical phenomena that take place are reflection refraction absorption interference diffraction polarization and another uh, thing which i missed here is the scattering phenomena okay so we'll be discussing about uh, each of these uh, things in uh, a separate video okay so that we can discuss them uh, in a good way so in today's video we are going to discuss about reflection and refraction it is also called as transmission okay so first so reflection so reflection is the phenomena the optical phenomena in which light returns back to the same medium in which it was originally traveling when it strikes a surface a smooth polished surface for example a mirror okay this is the most basic example of reflection of light so this reflection of light it follows the there is a suitable uh, there is a law associated with which is the law of reflection of light that is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection measured with respect to the normal so for example if this is a ray of light it strikes a polished or reflecting surface such as a mirror this is the angle of incidence the angle at which it strikes the mirror measured with respect to a perpendicular drawn at the point of incidence and this is the angle of reflection again measured with respect to the normal so as per the law of reflection of light this angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection now we have studied it in the optic section of uh, our uh, senior secondary level physics so we know this thing so this uh, will be used this phenomena will be used this law will be used very much when we discuss about the optoelectronic system okay the various uh, things that will be used it will involve this thing it is a basic thing but it is very important so this is the reflection of light then we have is the refraction of light so here when light travels from one medium to another okay and here by saying one medium i mean from when light travels from an optically denser medium to a, an optically rarer medium or an optically rarer medium to optically denser medium so when 
light travels in between two mediums there is a bending or change in the direction of light at the interface of the two media okay so interface is the point of separation the fine line that separates the two medium and by optically rarer and optically denser it means optically denser means uh, the the medium having a higher refractive index okay that is called as an optically denser medium and optically rarer medium is the one with a lower refractive index so it is relative in nature as compared to the two mediums okay so when light travels from one medium to another there will be a change in the direction of light at the point of interface at the interface point so this phenomena of bending or change in the direction of light is called as refraction of light okay now this follows snell's law of refraction of light okay so let us try to understand it suppose a ray of light is traveling from one medium to another medium okay and let's say this medium medium 2 has a higher refractive index okay so refractive index of medium 2 is greater than medium 1 okay so ray of light is traveling this is the interface we have a normal drawn at the point of at the point of meeting at the point at which the incident ray strikes the interface point and let's say that uh, angle of angle of incidence it is called as theta 1 because it is still traveling the incident ray is traveling in medium 1 now as it is traveling into an optically denser medium the ray of light will bend towards the normal okay it will bend towards the normal because it is traveling from an optically rarer medium to optically denser medium so obviously this angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction the angle of refraction is the angle which the refracted ray this is called as the refracted ray it makes with the normal okay so the angle of refraction is lesser than the angle of incidence or we can say the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction and as it is traveling from an optically rarer medium to optically denser medium it bends towards the normal now let us reverse the case if the same ray of light travels from this denser medium to rarer medium okay this denser medium to rarer medium in that case the same ray will bend away from the normal it will bend away from the normal in that case the angle of this refraction this angle of refraction will be greater than the angle of incidence in that case at this interface this is the angle of incidence this is the incident ray and this is the refracted ray so this is the angle of refraction this is the angle of incidence so here the refraction the angle of refraction is more than the angle of incidence so two things when light travels from a rarer medium to denser medium refraction the refracted ray bends towards the normal when it travels from a denser to rarer medium it bends away from the normal now snell's law gives us a relation between the angle of incidence and refraction in terms of the refractive index of the two medium and the velocity of propagation the phase velocity of the propagation of light in the two medium so here the snell's law it can be written as sin theta subscript i by sin theta subscript r which means the sin of the angle of incidence and the sin of the angle of refraction the ratio between them is equal to the refract uh, refractive index of the ray of light the refracted ray okay the refracted ray the uh, the medium in which the refracted ray travels divided by the refractive index of the medium in which the incident ray travels okay so you can measure with uh, you can understand it with respect to this okay here theta 1 is the angle of incidence and this incident ray is traveling in medium 1 so here theta i is equal to theta 1 the refracted ray travels in medium 2 so theta 2 the angle of refraction is called as theta 2 theta r is equal to theta 
and this refracted ray is traveling in medium 2. So here N2 is the refractive index of medium 2. So this Snell's law, it is given in terms of this. And uh, it is also related with the phase velocity of light as the phase velocity of the, uh, the medium of the light in the medium in which the incident ray travels divided by the phase velocity of the uh, medium in which the refracted ray travels. Okay, so this is theta is the angle of incidence, theta r is the angle of refraction, ni is the refractive index of the medium in which the incident ray travels and this is the same the refractive index in which the refracted ray travels and this is the phase velocity of the light in which the incident ray and this is the, the refracted ray travels. Okay, so always remember this relation. Also, the Snell's law, it can be represented in terms of permittivity and permeability of the medium. That is the, mag uh, the electric permittivity and the magnetic permeability. So, permittivity is of a medium can be defined as the ease with which electric current can propagate or electron can propagate through the medium and magnetic permeability is the ease with which the the, the thing, the magnetic lines, the magnetic flux can propagate through it. So, electric permittivity and magnetic permeability. So, Snell's law can be written in terms of that as sin theta i by sin theta r is equal to whole root over of uh, epsilon r mu r by epsilon i mu i, where epsilon r is the permittivity of medium in which refracted ray travels mu r is the permeability of the medium in which the refracted ray travels, epsilon i is the permittivity of the medium in which the incident ray travels and uh, mu i is the uh, permeability of the medium in which the incident ray travels. Okay, so same thing. So these are the two important things associated with uh, Snell's law of refraction, okay, which relates the angle of incidence and refraction with the refractive index of the two medium that is in the medium in which in the incident ray travels and the medium in which the refracted ray travels also the velocity of uh, propagation of the incident ray and the refracted ray and also with the permittivity and permeability of the two medium. So these are some important concepts associated with reflection and refraction, uh, refraction of light so which will be very handy in the upcoming uh, days in which we'll discuss about optoelectronics in greater detail so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much